Hey friends, this is Quest in Current Talking and today I wanted to show you the difference between a good and a bad USB-C cable. I bought both of those cables in their respective online stores and one of them already says on the packaging what it can do. It's a USB 4 cable with a maximum um, power delivery of 240 watts via the USB power delivery version 3.1 a data transmission of up to 40 gigabits per second and if you want to use it as a display cable it can do 8K resolution at 60 Hz frame rate. The second cable was advertised as a regular USB cable with no um, noticeable features besides um, it being able to handle USB 2 speeds. So now let's unpack both of them and take a look at what's inside. Uh, the USB 4 cable is a half a meter nominal length and I'm going to believe that it's going to be this and you can already see that it's quite thick and there is going to uh, be a lot of copper below the, the PVC insulation. This cable, sorry for the noise, um, is a lot thinner and if we compare those two um, to each other and I'm going to focus on that, you can see that there is going to be a lot less copper or whatever they use as a conductor inside. And after unpacking them we can see that we can basically not determine which cable is better and, and which cable is worse after um, removing the packaging itself. So besides the thickness and what we can feel from the cable, we cannot, cannot determine if this cable can charge our laptop or this cable can charge our laptop or if it's good for an external hard drive or not or whatever other um, use cases you have. You basically have to try it out. And this is why I brought in this BLE CableQ um, USB-C cable tester and if we plug it in then it will immediately tell us that we should plug in a cable. Before doing so um, I wanted to go in about the fact that this USB 4 cable is going to have an active um, electronics inside, some active electronics and active e-market chip, um, that's how it's called and so it's going to be able to communicate itself and tell about some, some details about itself and communicate with the device that it is connected to being a cable tester, being your phone, being your laptop, being your charger, it doesn't matter. It can actually um, tell itself um, apart from this cable. If you don't know what an e-marker is, then I've made a video about that and I'm going to link it up below somewhere here. Just press on it and, and take a look and come back once you've updated it yourself. This standard USB 2 cable is not going to have that. So we will first start by testing that one and after connecting it to this cable tester we can immediately see um, that the cable itself um, is at 0.48 gigabits per second which means that it's a USB 2 cable and a maximum charging power of 15 watts so that's 5 volts at 3 amps. The cable health is at 100% because I've basically just unpacked it and if we take a look at the specs then it can do USB 1.1 and 2.0 as well as 5 volts and uh, currents up to 3 amps. That's due to the cable resistance and the fact that it has to be rated um, at this current. The USB connector is going to look quite bleak. We can see that the ground connections are made, the VBUS connections and in addition to that uh, there is the D plus and D minus pin from the USB 2 as well as one of the CC pins to be able to advertise itself um, as a power source or power sink depending on what you connect it to. And if we go into the details sections then we can see what pins are actually connected and the available options as well as the VBUS resistance. And we can also see that there is actually no e-marker inside. So all the e-marker infos are going to be empty. Just the USB 2 speed um, is showing up due to the fact that the pins themselves are connected. With this in mind uh, we now know that the cable itself cannot be used with, for example, USB 4 devices or USB 3 devices. It will not be able to actually charge my laptop or my phone um, very quickly. And if we want to connect it to an external hard drive or something similar, then it may or may not work or um, even worse, may work in a degraded state, depending on what device you connect it to. Now, if we compare it to this cable and we're also going to connect it and take a look at the values that are coming out of it, we can see that this cable um, advertised itself as a USB 4 cable. That's uh, how we can see that the 40 gigabits per second that the packaging said and the 250 watts the packaging said. 240 watts if we compare it um, is actually um, 
good. And the cable health again is going to be 100% due to the cable resistance and a repair on it of the cable um, being quite new. Uh, if we take a look at the specs, now we can go up to USB 4 speeds, but it's also, also uh, backwards compatible, which is quite good if we have a device that's not capable of doing USB 4 or USB 3 speeds. And we can do debug accessing mode as well. Due to the fact that it's a 240 or 250 watts cable, um, it has to support all the voltages from 5 volts to 48 volts and all the currents from 0.5 amps to 5 amps fully. And if we take a, a look at the connector, now basically all of those connections are lit. <coughs> Only those two are not. This is due to the fact that no, none of these USB-C connectors, if you take a look at it, will have all of the connections made for backwards compatibility with the USB 2 standard. So you can easily create an adapter with USB-C to USB-A or USB-C to micro USB with those two connections in place uh, without having to look for, for them or having only one orientation of the connector being possible to plug it in. And if you go into the details, then you can see all the pins that are connected and the actual resistance that it has measured. And now we can see inside the e-marker that the cable has advertised itself as a passive cable with an e-marker chip inside. It didn't tell us which vendor it came from, interestingly enough, but it did tell us that the voltage is 50 volts maximum, the current is maximum of 5 amps, and it is actually a USB 4 Gen 3 cable, so it is quite a new cable uh, with a latency of smaller than 10 nanoseconds, which means that it's probably going to be uh, one meter or below. Um, the manufacturer again um, omitted the hardware software revision and just sent us the vendor defined message and the vendor defined message ID. With this in mind, we now know that even though both of those cables look quite similar, and you could use both of them to connect your phone or other devices to a charger or to each other, only one of them is actually going to work in the ways you want, want them to work. And this one is only going to work with slower devices that only need USB 2 or below or can charge um, anything at or below 15 watts. If you have any more questions, just put them in the comments below and thanks for watching.